going to need to find money if we start this work together. She smiled and she said, can I call you tomorrow? I said, well, I was pretty much going to say, you know, um, I would like to start next week, but we can't. <laughs> she said, fine, then I say, and she said, we'll do it. What I came to know from the relationship I built with her is uh, what I also came to learn about her was that, that uh, she was a woman of faith. She belonged to an Anglican church. And in the time that we built our relationship together, in those early years, there was no money. And she knocked on people's doors. She talked about what could be changed, exchanged so that they could provide some money. And she managed to knit something together so that we could keep going. So I'm coming to the end of my fourth year. At this point, uh, we're offering uh, a program that I developed called the Peer Support Program, an Aboriginal Peer Support Program. Simultaneously to my learning at the university, I was continuing my work of learning how to be a good guest here on these lands. And I found aunties and grandmothers to teach me. And the way in which I went about to, to do that was to make myself available to be their helper. So they would call and say, I'm going to be going to Native Women's today at such and such a time. And because I was mostly still a student, sometimes with meant this in class, I would accompany them. And I was learning the teachings that we were providing to the community. And in those particular times, they were also very clear about what teachings I could uh, pick up myself and the things that I would need to do in this work that I was building at the university. So that first program I developed, the peer support program, is based on an Anishinaabe teaching uh, of being an Ashkazay, which means being a helper. And I got that idea from my own community in the fact that as you're growing, you are never left alone. Uh, we have a calendar that we follow that mostly outlines the, the, the seasons in which we, we gather food. It also outlines the roles and responsibilities. Our winter time is the time that we do our formal learning. And the, the rest of the year, informally, that learning process is you picking up a task a particular interest you have and trying. And that process is about learning for yourself how to actually uh, be successful at it. It emphasizes that mistakes happen all the time, and that's how you learn. It emphasizes that none of us is perfect. It emphasizes that learning Contrary to how we've set up learning in universities, which is uh, very much an individual process, our processes are collective. Because we believe that every person coming into a circle, we have formal circles of learning, that collectively we have a better chance of everyone understanding what tasks at hand are or what needs to be learned. Because each of us, as individuals, with our individual gifts, can, we can assist each other in seeing the whole of what it is that is before us. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that we are sitting in a circle today. And I had thought, you know, at some point, we would go around the circle and allow each and every one of you to introduce yourself. 
That is important when we gather. That's foundational to building relationships with, with indigenous folk. It is at the heart of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's report. If you've not had the opportunity to read it its entirety, you can't do it in one city. I didn't. <clears throat> it's a stop and start. It is very dense. And there's many difficult moments uh, recorded within those pages. 